That Sober Guy podcast contains adult content, merciless truth, and emotional nudity. Listener discretion is advised. Yo, what's up? Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks to Humans for bringing us in. That's Humans Music. I'm not thanking all the humans in the universe, but that'd be nice of me, wouldn't it? Humans Music, check them out. Homies of the show. Great music right there. Uh, I think this is off the Going Late album. Thanks for tuning in today. Thanks for supporting the show. I'm Shane Raymer. You're listening to That Sober Guy Podcast. We help people stay sober. In turn, shit, I stay sober too, which was the ultimate reason why I started this show. Uh, We also talk about drugs, alcohol, recovery, motivation, a little bit of business stuff here. We talk about marriage. We talk about having kids. We talk about all kinds of fun, random shit in the process because what is being sober if you can't have fun? I remember uh, the early days of my sobriety or even contemplating trying to quit drinking, quit doing drugs, quit that party lifestyle that I led for many years. Uh, Man, how am I going to have fun and do that still? I'll tell you what, it's still possible. I have a great fucking time. Notice how I emphasize the F word there. Hope you're not. If you're offended, if you're easily offended, turn it off right now. Maybe hit to a meeting instead. This is not the show for you. But if you like rawness and you like realness and you like uh, some fun, some open conversation if you like to hear uh, some good guests. And today I'm going to be puking all over the microphone. Who knows what's going to come up? So this should be fun. Uh, stick around for a minute. Be sure to check us out at thatsoberguy.com. You can also connect with us on Instagram, at Real That Sober Guy, and on Twitter, at Shane Raymer. Uh, finding the right treatment for addiction and mental health illnesses can be tough. And that's why Sober Guys continue to partner with Foundation's Recovery Network. Foundation stays true to their mission. They hold high ethical standards and provide treatment in a nationwide network of residential and outpatient facilities. They also do some pretty amazing conferences around the country. Uh, We were down at one in, I believe it was June, at Innovations in Recovery down in San Diego, which we've been for a couple years. Been out to Nashville a couple times. I think that's Innovations in Behavioral Healthcare. And then uh, Moments of Change coming up in September out in Palm Beach, Florida, Uh, And it looks like we may be attending that one as well, doing some live podcasting. Uh, So you can always check out Foundations Conference, especially if you're in the industry, uh, treatment industry for uh, lots of good information, good connections, uh, good new innovative technology coming out. Uh, at those conferences. So be sure to check those out too. But if you or a loved one needs some help, here's what I'm getting at. Because this is the most important part in the foundation of the foundation of foundations. Oh man, man, that was terrible, wasn't it? I tried. Here's how you can get some help. Go to foundationshelp.com slash sober guy. Uh, or you can call 833-81-SOBER. That's 833-81-SOBER. Uh, and you can talk with an admissions coordinator about treatment options that can answer any questions for you. Uh, and you can get some good info. One more time, 833-81-SOBER. And big thanks to Foundations uh, for working with that sober guy for the last couple of years. All right, like I said, we're going to puke on the microphone. I got minimal announcements today, uh, which is great. We're going to jump right into this thing. I mentioned earlier, started this show really to help myself stay sober. Uh, Maybe talk to some of my homies who were in recovery or going through recovery. Um, You know, back in 20, gosh, we started in 2014. Um, and it's been amazing to watch the, the, the platform grow, the community grow. Um, and I thank you guys for that. And I, I I don't think I say this enough. I get a lot of emails and messages, um, you know, telling people, sharing their story a little bit about it, talking about how the podcast has helped maybe get them to a meeting or it's helped them, um, relate to something or maybe just open them up, make them feel like they're not alone a little bit. And I appreciate that. I just want to say um, on top of that, next to that, with that, whatever that verbiage looks like, because I'm not quite sure, I think it all means the same shit anyways, is that this helps keep me sober so much too. And I just appreciate you guys. I appreciate the interaction. Uh, the best way to hit us up if you want to do that is uh, on Instagram, at Real That Sober Guy once again. Um, and I try to get back to every single message that I can. I don't. I think occasionally I can you know miss them 
Um, but I really do make a good effort to, to keep in contact and communicate with everyone because I do enjoy doing that. So thank you guys. So if you have questions, you have ideas for the show, anything you can hit us up at real that sober guy on Instagram, best way to get a hold of us there. Um, so I wanted to mention before we get into a little bit of, uh, of today's content, which is really just going to be some random stuff that's been really going on in, in my experience in the last week, last week, couple of weeks. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, the Jess, many of you know the Jess, who the Jess is also my beloved spouse who supported me from uh, day one going to rehab, going through this journey with me, with the kids and life in general and trying to find ourselves and come together as a family, all that stuff. She launched the Honest Moms podcast uh, last month, which is her and her friend Rachel. And uh, they're they're just talking about being moms. Um, they're talking about how to be, uh, how to how to be better moms, how to be better wives, how to be better women in general, how do they deal with a lot of the stuff going on in life, um, you know, with with family stuff, with kid stuff, with still trying to be that woman that they are inside. And um, I feel like I'm going a little bit too deep here trying to describe the show. So <laughs> let me just stop right there. Honest Moms Podcast. If you're a mom out there, dude, if you're a dude and you got a wife out there or a lady that you don't quite understand, like me, because let me tell you something, women are confusing as shit. And I mean that with the utmost respect. I have no fucking clue most of the time what I'm doing, where I'm going. What my mind is like, it's in, it's crazy sometimes, right? Um, I'm trying. I, I'm not giving up. I'll tell you that much. But I listened to a couple of the podcasts that they did and it did help. It helped me understand a little bit about, you know, where they're coming from, their point of view. A lot of the time, especially for those of us in recovery, you know, and I'll speak for myself here. I take shit personal way too often, whether it's, I didn't, I misunderstood something. Um, I, I, I'm just being an asshole, whatever it is, who name the day, name the time, name the, the emotional status, whatever. I don't know what the hell I'm doing most of the time, okay? So what I'm saying is even their podcast, even though it's Honest Moms, it's geared towards moms, it's geared towards women, uh, you can get some good insight in there too and share it with your ladies, you know, or if you're, you know, it always has, has shocked me over the years, how many women actually listen to this show? Because I always thought like that sober guy, that would be like a dude's platform for like recovery. And I swear we probably have just as many uh, female listeners as we do male listeners, which I love. I think it's awesome because both those perspectives are so important. I think it brings um, both different viewpoints from different experiences all together. Two families into one. As my good buddy Seth Manter stood up at our friend's wedding, highly intoxicated before he was sober, thank God, and announced to the whole audience, I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this. I think he's actually shared it on the podcast before. The other one in that same event, whose wedding was that, by the way? I think it was our homie Rick's wedding. Big Raider fans. He later stood up and announced the 2010, whatever year it was, now introducing your 2010 Oakland Raiders. This is why we're eating salads at the event, at the wedding event in Lake Tahoe with all the tables around and everything was nice. And then I believe he proceeded to fall over a fence um, and got taken out of the wedding. So Seth, I love you. I hope you don't mind. I just shared one of your, your best drunk stories. I'm sure people will appreciate that. We've all fucking been there, right? We've all done some, some shit that we're not too fond of these days. And uh, we look back now and we can laugh about it and go, thank God. I got myself out of that. Thank God, God got my ass out of that. How about that? It's a little bit better even there too. So check out the Honest Moms podcast. And here's one, here's a, a, a um, it, 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 yeah. and I told you I was going to puke. I didn't quite do it there yet, but check out the codependency episode. That's really the other reason I wanted to talk about this real quick. Jess just put a solo episode out called Overcoming Codependency, where she shared a bit about her experience as, um, a wife on the other side or a partner, however you want to frame it up, a friend, a family member. I mean, it could really, uh, it could really work with, with any, uh, situation like that, a loved one and being on the other side of addiction, being on the other side of what, what she went through, what, you know, finding herself, trying to look at herself, um, from an honest perspective and address the codependency issues there. So that is uh, episode seven, I think, on Honest Moms. And I'll put the uh, I'll put the show notes 
uh, or the show notes. I'll put a link to that episode in the show notes if you're interested in checking out. So Rachel, Jess, good job. Super proud of you guys. Glad to be a part of, uh, of the Honest Moms podcast too as I got to help a little bit with some of the early production stuff and I got to show Jess some stuff which was awesome and she's just kicking ass now doing her own thing. Uh, so congratulations. Um, everything's going good on that. And be sure to check it out. Subscribe. Hit the links. Do all that good stuff. Uh, speaking of Jess, we had a date night out recently. Went to the old Outback Steakhouse. Outback Steakhouse. Can't go wrong. Let me get a good steak. I want the mashed potatoes. Uh, maybe we'll get a blooming onion. Give me some ranch with that. Don't want any of that bread, but I'm going to eat the shit out of this blooming onion here. We're sitting there, and uh, I think the kids went over to, uh, to uh, Jess's parents' house. And thank you for that, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Matthews. Um, yeah, they went over there. We went to go have a, a little date night out. And uh, decided to hit up the old Outback. And it was fun. It was fun. And uh, we were sitting there. And I wish Jess was here to... Uh, we try to coordinate these things. We, we've been meaning to do a podcast together. And there's just always something going down. And it's either late and we don't end up getting to it. So hopefully that will uh, be in store soon. Because she's the one who said this. It was hilarious. And I, we were. And, and if you're a restaurant manager, I apologize in advance. Um, it, this shit's funny though. And it just... All restaurant managers, they look the same. They look exactly the same. Let me let me let me map this out for you, okay? You got your your khakis, okay? Your khakis, maybe tan, maybe an olive color khaki. Um, you got maybe some bass shoes. Anybody know what bass shoes are? Bass shoes and clothing. It's kind of a uh, outdoorsy. Uh, dressy kind of shoe. Actually, that was my first job. That's the only reason I'm bringing this up. Me and my homeboy, Dan, when I was like 15, I think that uh, worked at Bass Shoes and Clothing Outlet here in Vacaville. So you got your khakis though for your restaurant manager. You got your Bass Shoes, uh, you know, uh, little dress shoes. Um, always the keys are always looped around the belt loop. You always got to have the keys there, right? Because you got a bunch of keys for the different areas of the restaurant. Normally going to have um, probably a light blue, uh, maybe white, sometimes light blue, maybe white uh, uh, button up uh, uh, dress shirt on, right? Um, occasionally the polo, you might get a polo in there as well. Uh, now, when you move up, usually going to be, uh, and, and, and this is, uh, this isn't all, Okay, let me just stop right there. Let me just keep going because I'm trying to recover, but fuck it. I'm making fun of restaurant managers right now. Just the way it is. I don't know. The one I saw, he looked the same as all the other ones. Slightly balding on top. Now, I'm not being a judgmental prick because I'm slightly balding myself. I got the yarmulke going on in the back that my kids love to point out. Uh, so thank you for that. I'm well aware of it. Uh, so I'm in the same club as the restaurant manager with the with the balding spot on top or maybe the receding hairline that's going back. And they all walk the same. Walking around the restaurant and uh, Jess and I are kind of scoping this out because, and let me tell you why this is also important to Jess and I, because we both worked in restaurants for a lot of years um, in our uh, teens and into our 20s. So we had a lot of different restaurant managers and, and saw the vibe of the restaurant scene and uh, all that good stuff going on. So much fun. But uh, I look over and I, I go, man, why do, why do all the restaurant managers, they look the same? And Jess kind of looks at me and she goes, do you think he goes home at night? And his wife is like turned on by him. <laughs> and I just start busting up laughing because I, number one, it's funny. Number two, um, I don't know. I, I can only imagine what that might look like. Old, uh, old Betty's waiting at home for John to come home from the old outback after a nice night grilling steaks. And, uh, you know, hey, maybe they get down. Maybe they get down. Tongues. Um, different styles, different positions. Who knows what goes on? Or maybe they sit down and they have a, a nice bowl of mac and cheese and maybe a, a, a steak, maybe some chicken, and they watch a little bit of uh, Phil Donahue reruns and they hit the hay. I don't know what goes on. I don't know, okay? But what I do know <laughs> is I was sober this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to reel it back in and talk about sobriety because that had nothing to do with it, right? And that's why I started saying I'm going to puke all over this microphone today because uh, it's going to be one of those episodes. This is a release. This is an outlet. This is communication, my friends. 
communication. We got to communicate. We got to talk. We got to get this shit out, even if it is talking about Outback Steakhouse. I'm like a, a promotional servant for Outback Steakhouse now. But hey, if you do want a good cheap, cheaper, cheap it on the cheaper end, Outback's not bad, right? Sitting there, they got the little booth in there. They got the little uh, little monitor thing that you just slide. That's the other thing I noticed too. Now we're so self-service oriented. We had a server and they had the, uh, I don't even know what it's called. It's like a little computer, I guess, at the, at the table. And you can order from that thing. You don't even have to wait for your server. You can punch in your, your I don't know if you can do drinks. I know you can punch in your appetizers. I'm pretty sure you can punch in your food. And then when you're done, I just burped. I tried to turn away. Uh, then when you're done, you can pay your damn check right there too. I mean, we're going to eliminate the need for a service, server, service. And if you guys know what, if you've ever been a server or worked in a restaurant, you know what I'm talking about. Servant tables is a fucking hard job, especially when you got shitty people. I always try to tip well, partly because I was a server, same as Jess, um, Jess on the tipping. Yeah, we might have to work on that a little bit. Sorry, babe. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding just totally threw her under the bus what an ass um oh god now i'm just thinking about how i'm gonna get shit for that comment but anyways uh, <laughs> maybe not i think there's some truth to it she's getting better okay she's working on it it always just surprised me though i go babe like you think you're gonna tip a little bit more than that like well she goes well i don't know i don't i think she genuinely just didn't didn't know i don't think that all of us calculate for inflation because inflation has just went through the roof and you know 10 bucks just isn't as much as it used to be back in the day anyways what the fuck am i talking about i'm totally getting off track here back to the restaurant managers or what well, what was i going into before that i feel like i was uh i was on to something that i got derailed now i'm back onto it i don't know but 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 <laughs> <laughs> holy cannoli you ever heard that term holy cannoli anyways we had a good date night it's important take your lady out um you know take your man out however you want to look at it have some fun together do things together that you know and obviously if you're if you're trying to live a sober lifestyle there's plenty of shit you can do and not have to revolve everything around drinking you know i know i, I think when i stopped too and, and as this times went on it's just so it's so funny how everything revolves around uh, the social aspect, at least around alcohol, uh, when, when you're not a part of it. It's everywhere and you're never going to get away from it. And uh, I think I was talking to my homie Josh yesterday and I was talking about how, you know, and I, this is something else I was going to get into. We recently took a trip to Phoenix um, it, just for for a night for, I guess, two days um, to take some photos over there. And uh and we had a good time and it, it, it you know we we had fun as a family we got to represent um you know families in recovery and a shout out to, to carly to kathy um to caleb and to cali uh man like lots of k's and c's there i just noticed uh but shout out to all those guys for having us out and, and gals guys just want to be proper here okay want to be proper big love to them though for giving us an opportunity um, to represent families in recovery and and uh, and and see that there's hope, you know what I'm saying? Like see that there's a there's a chance for for change. So, uh, but anyways, we went out to Phoenix and I realized my like alcoholic tendencies, you know, and I even hate framing it up like that sometimes because I think it's just. It's just tendencies in general from a human being standpoint. We don't, we're wired certain ways. Alcohol drugs was the tool that I used to deal with a lot of the shit that I didn't know how to deal with or didn't want to deal with or refused to deal with. Even at the airport, you know, Jess started calling me travel Shane because you get in that travel mode. I got in that travel mode and I started just being in a rush, you know, st starting to stress out 
starting to come on come come on come on guys let's go we, go, we gotta go we gotta we gotta get here we gotta we gotta get we gotta get in line hold on we gotta get the car now hold on we're just coming down there up stop right there up, up, hey 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 you got that you left it here oh put your shit in the bin put your shit in the bin let's go through okay we're gonna go through okay hey 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 you guys want something to eat you guys want something to eat okay no no, no one wants anything okay let's get the fuck on the plane gotta get the okay so i i, I probably just stressed you the fuck out because i stressed myself out just by even talking like that but that's kind of what i felt like a lot of the time, and I'm, I'm exaggerating a bit. I, I hope I'm exaggerating a bit. Good Lord, that's different when you look at from the outside looking in. Um, but it felt like that inside. You know, just the the, the constant go the and, and just not being in the moment. And what I was getting at was those aren't things that caused, that were caused by alcohol or, or my drinking habits or drugs or anything like that. Those are tendencies that lie in me that were instilled in me probably when I, when I was young at a young age. And I grew up like that and they evolved over time and I evolved as a person, but I had no healthy tools to deal with certain stuff and cope with stuff and learn how to live life on like a healthy, you know, or, or somewhat, um, normal level, you know, uh, outlets that are healthy, all that stuff. I turned to drugs and alcohol. Well, the point of this is, is that, and this is what I was talking to Josh about was that the, that stuff hasn't went away inside of me. I'm constantly working on it. I'm, you know, I've, I've gotten much better on it. Right. But just because I quit drinking and just because I quit, um, banging out fucking lines of cocaine and smoking pot all day, every day and popping any pill that anybody gave me or I could get my hands on, you know, so I could constantly be in a state of, um, of numbness and just not deal with my reality, which was a, a shitty fucking car, barely able to pay my rent lights getting turned off, uh, on wick, you know, having to fucking get state cheese and state milk. And not that there's anything wrong with any of that shit, because sometimes people need that. That's what it's there for. But at the same time, there was so much more potential in my life to, to get after what God had in front of me, you know, what God had for our family, and I was fucking blown at all right there in that moment because I had no healthy tools and no, no communication skills and no security and no self-esteem and all of that stuff was not the product of alcohol or drugs directly. It was the product of me not understanding how to live life on life's terms, not Shane Raymer's terms. You feel me? That's what I'm saying. That's what I want. I so want people to understand that or just plant that seed, you know, for, for so many people out there struggling that, that we, we blame everything on the alcohol and on the drug and we refuse to take a look, or maybe we don't refuse to, we don't understand it yet. And that's, that's to no fault of anyone's own in that, in those early stages of that, because that's where I was at. And we've all, you know, the, all of us that have been in recovery, no matter what stage you're in, you've probably been through that at some point early on where you just don't, you just feel lost and confused. And what I'm saying here is I, I want to be able to save people the time. I want to save you years you know, ahead if I can, because this is something that's taken me years to kind of grasp a hold of, and I still don't have a full grasp of it. And I always say, I'm not a professional. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a therapist. I'm doing this from my own personal experience and because I enjoy to do it. And I hope to stay sober myself and help some other people out there at the same time by sharing some of my own shit. But the drugs and the alcohol were the fucking tool, just like I was a tool doing the dumb shit I was doing, but those were the tool that I was using to cope. It wasn't the ultimate problem. The problem is me, personal responsibility, personal choice. I chose to not pay my fucking rent and go spend it on other shit, not just drugs and alcohol, dumb shit, going to shows, buying clothes, spending it on food, going out to the bars, all that stuff that I know all of us have done. Those are personal choices, okay? Those are, those are personal choices and we have to take personal responsibility. I had to step up and take personal responsibility for that stuff and not blame other people, which is still something I'm working on. I still blame my wife. I still, that just came out of my mouth right now. Candid as fuck. I still blame Jess for shit sometimes. I am so, I'm a blamer. You're a fucking blamer, Raymer. I am. I'm a blamer. And I have to admit it 
I have to. It's still, this is after six years, almost six years of, of sobriety, and I'm still fucked up, like straight up. And maybe that sounds a little brutal, you know, but if I'm, if I'm honest with myself, I still have so much work to do. Still have so much work to do. I'm never going to be there. It's just constant practice, practice, practice. How the fuck do you get good at something? You practice. You do it every day. You get a little bit better. You don't beat yourself up when you mess up. You keep going. You keep going. You get back up. You keep going. So let me jump back into the Phoenix thing real quick. So we get back from Phoenix after all that, after all of the the stress. And we had a good time, by the way, too. Don't Don't get me wrong. We had a good time. I didn't think it was like, I've been way more stressed in my life than I was on this trip, but apparently it was kind of evident that, that my mind wasn't, was preoccupied with logistics, plane tickets, you know, times, um, money, making sure everything went smoothly, trying to control everything. If you go back to the big book, I can't remember what page it's on, but they talk about the alcoholic in the play who wants to be the actor, the playwright, he wants to be the stagehand, he wants to be in the audience, he wants to make sure everything goes smoothly, right? That's probably a good way to describe um, how I can be a lot of the time and how I was on this trip. I And, and I, I think that it comes from a good place now, at least. I, I feel like it's okay to say that. Like it's not because... It's not because I'm trying to be a controlling prick or anything and and be an asshole. It's just I I want to control things because I want everything to go smoothly. I want it to go, well, here's what it is. I want it to go my fucking way. How about that? I want it to go my way. How many of you out there listening can can feel me on that? You want it to go your way. And if it doesn't go your way, if it doesn't go my way, I'm going to lose my shit. I'm going to lose my shit. I'm going to lose my shit on somebody whether it's my wife, my friend, a business, a random person who cuts me off. You fucking, you just cut me off. I'm going to take that personal as shit and take that. Mother, let me just flip you off. As I, let me give you the look. Yeah, how about the look? You lo- love that when you drive by someone, they, they cut you off or you, you did something. Maybe you didn't go at the stoplight fast enough and they drive by and they give you the slow look to the side. Ooh, you're so tough. What the fuck does that do? I've always wondered that. What did, the, did you just look right through me and, oh man, you just looked at me. What the fuck am I talking about? I don't know, but I've been in that position before. I do know actually. I do know. I do know. I do know. Do you know though? But you feel me on that, right? If it doesn't go our way, if it doesn't go our way, we tend to freak out. So we get back home and just, well, before we get back home, and I'm totally spilling our business here, but you know, this is the type of stuff that I know everyday people go through not just me. I know I'm not alone in this stuff and and maybe the situation's a little different with with different people and stuff, but I think the general concept is the same and it kind of it can it can apply uh, to anybody. We get you know, we get to the to the off the plane back in Sacramento and we're trying to get the bus and go back and get the car and it's been a long day of of plane. We had a layover in San Diego and you know, and Jess proceeds to point this stuff out to me. She's not very happy. Not very happy with me. Oh, not to mention, and please go go on Instagram and and find this at real that sober guy. There's a picture I snapped because my ass was so occupied with getting good seats on the plane and making sure the kids and Jess had their own row and making sure that we were on time and we had all of our stuff. I zipped right in, made sure they had a row and then threw my shit up in the bin and sat down in the seat. I didn't even help my wife and my kids throw their shit up in there. I mean, what, what kind of an asshole move is that? And it wasn't intentional. It was just, my mind was so preoccupied with all this stuff. Like I wasn't in the moment and, and it's funny. And the reason I said, go check out my Instagram is because I snapped a picture of Jess behind me in the seat and she's flipping me off and it's fucking hilarious. So go check that out. Give it a like, give it a comment on there. Uh, if you, uh, if you think it's funny, I thought it was funny, even though I was an asshole. Um, but she proceeds to point this stuff out to me. I'm not in the moment, you know, I'm a scatterbrain and, and, and what do I do? I bet you can guess what I did. What do you think? I did you think? Yeah, babe, you're right. I didn't do what I should have done. Should have listened, should have been able to take some of the constructive criticism, 
right? And she wasn't even really criticizing me. She was just pointing these things out and and she, you know, she was doing it pretty respectfully, I got to say. No, I immediately got defensive. I immediately uh, shut down, which is what I do a lot. I shut down. And then I immediately gave her the silent treatment the whole way home. (laughs) And I laugh about it now just because it's so immature and childish and hilarious all at the same time. And it just shows I have no fucking clue what I'm doing still till this day. So thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and that that's a whole nother aspect of this too. Just trying to rely on God for things, you know? And, and, and so when we got home, we, we, uh, we elevated our tone as we conversated in the bedroom. Uh, let's just put it that way. Uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. We've been in some, uh, we're learning how to communicate better without yelling. Let's put it that way. And so we, we were conversating at a, at a pretty, um, little higher tone than usual, you know, tr- both trying to get our points across and I'm not listening still. And I said, you know, and then I went to immediately, well, I got to do this and I got to do that. And I'm responsible and all this shit weighs on me. And the, so I'm going down that road. Right. And, and Jess looks at me and she goes, you have no faith. You have no faith in God. Where's God at? He's going to handle this. And I and and that that was the moment when I said, "Wow." Yep, she's right like usual. <laughs> Gentlemen, your ladies are usually always right, okay? So just uh that's something I'm still trying to learn and figure out. I'm just dumb to it sometimes. I think I got all the answers. And hey, don't get me wrong, I can be a smart dude sometimes. Sometimes I can be a complete fucking moron too. So got to take the good with the bad, I guess. But it hit me in that moment and I went, man, she's so fucking right. And then I got mad because she was right and I was wrong. And then it hit me again. I said, man, how many times have we heard that saying, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? I want to be happy. Now, I say that I want to be happy. I still want to be right at the same time, right? Got to work on that. But she was so right in that moment. I have had no faith, no I have had my, my, my faith in, in God in, in letting go. And this is, this is something buddy and I talked about earlier in the week. Um, my faith in letting go and being okay and trusting that everything's going to work out just the way it's supposed to has not been there. I've been trying to be the stagehand controlling everything. And, and I think maybe we'll make that the topic of this week's episode. And see, that's why I love doing this show because this is all, everything you're getting right now is very organic and real. I didn't write, I took some talking points and everything is very organic and real. And I think we'll, I think we will uh, title this episode something about the stage hand and something about trying to control everything because I'm realizing as I'm talking this out, that's what's been going on. I've had no faith. And so as usual, if I had a dollar for every time I've had to apologize, good Lord, I'd be a wealthy man. But hey, I guess that's a good thing, right? I'm learning how to apologize, that I need to apologize. Hopefully, I'll learn by the time maybe I'm 55, if I'm lucky enough to live that long, uh, I can cut down on those apologies by not being a fucking idiot in the first place and just doing things the right way. But hey, it's a practice. It's a practice. So anyways, we kissed and made up for the most part. And uh, my ass said, I'm sorry. Just knocked some sense into me. And um, I'm really trying to dive back in and understand that I don't have control over much. And the moment I try to do it Shane's way is the moment that it falls apart. So I, I hope that you listening out there can relate to that. What are you trying to do your own way? And you really feel, and you could feel it in your gut. It's going against the stream, right? You're going against the grain. You're going, to, you're, go, you're, you're paddling upstream. You can feel it. You can feel you're not going with the flow. What are you doing in your life today that you're paddling upstream? You're going, not going with the flow. You're not letting go. You're not giving it up to something higher and saying, man, God, I know you got this. You got me today. You're my boy. You got me. That's where the freedom lies for me, you know, in in having faith. And it's it's not an easy thing to do all the time, but, um, you know, and that that depends on on people's circumstances too. Some people are going through some really, really difficult stuff. And I always want to be sympathetic to that and and 
um, and fair to that too. Like my little minuscule problems right now are nothing compared to some people's shit. But I'm sure one day I'm going to be dealing with some real serious stuff. And that's why it goes back to that practice. How are we preparing for life every single day? We never know what's coming. And that's not a fear-based statement to live in fear. Oh my God, that's fucking some bad's going to happen. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying we need to be prepared and we need to practice and you know, I have to be on my game and and stop trying to be the stagehand, the actor, the audience member, uh, the writer, everything. Because trying to control everything just does not work. It doesn't work. It never has. Um, so, yeah, the Phoenix, the Phoenix trip was great. Once again, thank you to uh, to to those guys for having us out um, at Promises. We appreciate you guys. And uh, it, was, it was cool to be you know, a part of it and, uh, to represent families in recovery. Um, it was the kid's first airplane trip, by the way, too. And cash got his ears pierced cash, got his ears pierced, uh, before we left Arizona, which is hilarious. And I think Jess posted a picture on Instagram. If you want to check that out too, I think she's at this at, this is us six one six. Uh, and you can check those out there too. July is busy, man. Uh, I really have to rely on God every day, but especially this month. I mean, there's so much stuff going on. As a matter of fact, hey, we got birthdays up the ass this week. We got my birthday on Monday, the 15th, right? July 15th. I'm going to be 38, 38 years old. Can you believe that? I can't believe it. I still feel like I'm 25 and I act like I'm 16. So somewhere in between those three ages, hopefully there's a uh, respectable adult in there, but uh, it's yet to be seen. Cashew Boy is going to turn five on the 18th. Uh, Brody, our dog, is going to turn 11 on the 19th. And guess who else is celebrating something on the 19th? Jess and I will celebrate our 11th anniversary uh, together. So pretty exciting, but a busy month. We're starting T-ball. Um, and babe, much love to you. I love you so much. I can't believe we've been together 11 years already. It's pretty crazy. You know, known each other since sixth grade. And uh, we're still trucking along, doing the best we can. Um, so it's going to be a busy week next week. It's going to be fun. Um, and what else are we doing? Going to the River Cats game tomorrow. That should be good. A little baseball action, a little sober baseball. Man, it's nice going and having a good time and remembering it. Got to say that. Happy birthday to my buddy Cash. My best buddy is what he calls me. It's Beth buddy. You're my best buddy. It's the best, man. The best. Nothing better than being a dad and having your boy uh, love you like a best buddy. Um, what do I want to end with here? Well, I let me let me end with this. Okay, I know this is really raw today. Um, I hope I didn't rant too much. I hope you got something out of that. I know that uh, I can I can tend to fucking get crazy sometimes and talk about stuff that doesn't make sense but it's kind of all part of the process here and um you know these control issues for me and the obsessiveness so i used to obsess over the drinking and now i obsess over having everything in, in its right place or having everything arranged or having everything lined up and playing chess and being ahead of you know five steps ahead of everything like that's my obsession now and uh it's it can be a tough way to live sometimes if i'm not you know, when I'm in it, when I'm in it and it's hard to snap out of it sometimes. And, um, you know, I just want to say if you're struggling with anything out, you know, like that out there, maybe it's not alcohol, maybe it is alcohol, maybe it's not, I don't know, whatever it is, that obsessiveness, that compulsiveness for me all starts with fear. It all stems from fear. It's, it's, it's fear of not enough fear of, um, not things not going the way that I planned fear. I'm going to miss out fear. I'm going to lose fear. I'm not going to live up to fear. I'm not going to be good enough fear. I'm going to fail straight up. Now, how do I combat that? How do I, how do I battle back against all that? I, I got to give it up to God. I got to, I got to let go and understand that I can't do this life on my own. I can't trust me. I've tried and, and it's impossible for me. It's absolutely impossible. Um, you know, that day-to-day -day grind is uh, some, days are, some days are better than others, right? 
we got good days, we have bad days, and that's that's never going to change for the, our entire lives. And this life is so short. You know, I want to enjoy it. I want to enjoy my kids. I want to enjoy my wife. I want to enjoy my family, my extended family. I want to enjoy everybody. You know, my in-laws, my mom, um, my my sister, my dad. Um, I mean, everybody. I don't care. I mean, we all have our shit, right? We all have our shit. But like, especially my kids, man, I want to enjoy that time. And that, you know, this trip was kind of a wake up call for that, like being in the moment. So I think that's what I'd like to end with, end with today um, is, is be in the moment, let go, give up control, find, find something higher. If you got an issue with God, that's fine, but find something that's higher than, than us. There's something higher up there that uh, that we can give this up to that can help guide us along. And I know when I'm in that mode, man, it, it just it just makes things so much easier and so much better. Uh, check out the Honest Moms podcast. Once again, I'll put the show notes for Jess's codependency episode uh, if you'd like to check that out. Uh, my, my love to all of the restaurant managers out there. That was all in good fun, but y'all motherfuckers do look the same. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, thanks to Foundations uh, Recovery Network. Uh, much love to those guys. Thanks to Humans for uh, for bringing us in, taking us out. Good music there. Um, go to thatsoberguy.com and uh, check us out. At Real That Sober Guy on Instagram and at Shane Raymer on Twitter. Love you guys. Thank you for tuning in once again. Peace, love, and respect. Keep your blood clean. So keep my head on straight I've been trying To keep my head on straight You still say that I don't know Anything about you Oh, I don't know anything about you But I know what you do in the back room Say that I don't know anything about you Oh, I don't know anything about you But I know what you do in the back